Hi there and welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend. For a long time now we've had this east-west contrast in our weather across the UK and we're going to continue to see an east-west contrast in our weather across the UK in the next 10 days but it's going to switch around. At the moment, we've got high pressure sitting to the north of the UK. That's keeping things settled. It's keeping things mostly cloud free, but the air is coming in from the east. That means the highest temperatures are towards the west and the southwest, much cooler on the North Sea coast. I know a lot of people have been complaining about how cold it's been recently. It's not quite as cold now, but nevertheless, that east west temperature contrast remains. But through the next few days, a big switcheroo with low pressure in the Atlantic edging closer. You can see the jet stream swirling to the south of this low. And by the time we get to the weekend, watch how that low approaches. Not a necessarily a, a deep low by any means, but uh, that does introduce more unstable air. And as the jet stream starts to influence our weather a bit more, rather than being way to the north of the UK, well, that's going to cause some weather to happen into the weekend and certainly throughout much of next week. What kind of weather? Well, the ingredients are there with that jet stream picking up some more humid air from the southwest as well as low pressure helping to cause the air to rise for some showers and some very lively thunderstorms. In fact, we're going to see the first signs of that as we go through Thursday. Now, for most, Thursday is a very similar day to Wednesday, sunny skies, but watch how these showers and possible thunderstorms develop over North Wales and then more especially across the Republic of Ireland and then by the evening drifting into parts of Northern Ireland. Very hit and miss, not everywhere will catch one of these showers and thunderstorms, but where they occur, frequent lightning, large hail, torrential rain, could be some serious impacts but very localised. For the vast majority, it stays dry through Thursday, long spells of sunshine and very warm once again away from that east coast where temperatures will be closer to average. By the start of Friday, though, you can see a lot more of these showers on the map, mostly avoiding mainland UK, but certainly approaching the Republic of Ireland and one or two popping up elsewhere around western coast and a bit more cloud coming along as well. So Friday again starts off with sunny skies and for most it stays sunny into the afternoon. But you can see how there are a few more of these lively showers on the map across parts of Wales, northwest England into southwest Scotland and the place that is most likely to be affected by serious thundery activity, western parts of Northern Ireland, where the forecast appears to be for very unstable air, so rapidly rising air, high humidity, higher temperatures, and the result, uh, well, could be some serious thunderstorms. Again, large hail, frequent lightning, torrential rain, in those areas that are affected by these thunderstorms, but just like popping popcorn in a pan, very difficult to nail down exactly where they happen, but the most, well, the highest risk area at the moment looks to be on Friday afternoon, western parts of Northern Ireland, so County, Tyrone County for Manor, for example. Now, that's the first sign of a change, but uh, it's going to slowly occur. Not everyone will be affected by that change on Friday as the low pressure edge is closer. However, it is approaching and the jet stream comes along as well. Jet stream close to the UK, low pressure close to the UK, and dredging up higher humidities, all the key ingredients there for unstable air and some heavy showers or thunderstorms heading into the weekend. All the ingredients are there, yes, but that doesn't mean everyone will be affected at all times. As is always the case with thunderstorms, they'll be highly hit and miss and trying to predict exactly where these showers and thunderstorms will occur each day when you're looking more than a couple of days ahead it would be a fool's game, to be honest. But what we can tell you is those areas that are higher risk than others heading into the weekend. And the blue blobs on this lower resolution rainfall map will just indicate uh, really western parts of the UK on Friday and then into southwestern parts and southern parts on Saturday afternoon. That's where the most unstable air is. That's where the greatest risk area for these lively thunderstorms will be on Saturday afternoon and into the evening. And then by the time we get into Sunday, this low is getting ever closer. These showers and thunderstorms, even some longer spells of rain drawn up from the continent where some thunderstorms are likely to develop later in the weekend over France, for example. These could drift out away as well to affect other parts, especially in the south. So really, there's the ingredients there. There's certainly a lot of potential. Some places will get a lot of rainfall in a short space of time, 50 millimetres in an hour or two, for example. 
but not everyone will be affected. These will be hit and miss showers and thunderstorms. South and southwestern areas at first through the weekend and then increasingly that risk area draws northwards as the low pressure comes along. And that low pressure sitting to the west or southwest of the UK will continue to cause instability and humidity through the next few days. Another thing that's going on, I mentioned that east-west split in temperatures. Well, this is the time of recording. We've got the high pressure to the north and we've got this easterly airflow. But watch what happens as we go into the weekend. With that low pressure approaching, the winds change direction and we get more of a southerly or southwesterly airflow. That's going to cause high humidities, but it's also going to switch around those areas that are affected by the highest temperatures. So where we see the UK highest temperatures will change over the next few days. As an example, here's uh, Porth Maddock, West Wales, and that's one of the, that's been one of the hotter spots over the last few days. But watch that downward temperature trend as the winds now come in more from the west rather than the east, so coming in from the sea rather than the land. We're back to around average for the start of next week. But conversely, Great Yarmouth, so the east coast of Norfolk and those temperatures are rising through the next few days up to 21 Celsius. Nothing particularly hot, but temperatures have been suppressed here because of the wind coming from the North Sea. As those winds come in from the west or southwest, those temperatures will rise. So the warmest spots will be towards the west rather than, or more towards the east rather than the west. And just to fill in the gaps, here are the maximum temperatures expected on Thursday. You can see that cooling effect in the east with the highest temperatures towards the south and southwest. Saturday, still mid to high 20s possible, but more towards central and southeastern areas. And you can see that upward uh, trend across eastern parts of England, still mid 20s, fairly widely, 28, 29 Celsius possible. A bit cooler by the time we get to Monday across all parts, except the east, with the winds now coming in from the southwest, 27 Celsius there for Norwich, whilst low 20s more likely towards the north and the west. Having said that, well, the maximum temperatures each day are likely to be lower through the weekend and the start of next week compared with now because there'll be more cloud. There'll be some showers around as well. That will limit temperatures. But at the same time, we're going to see higher humidity coming our way from the southwest. And that will mean perhaps a more humid feel, certainly, but also overnight temperatures could be higher than they are at the moment. So quite muggy nights in many places, especially in the south and especially on Sunday night into the start of Monday, some very humid air. And we keep that theme going into the middle of next week. This is the most likely setup for the middle of next week. You can see the UK there coloured in all sorts of bright colours indicating the chance of rainfall, but it's uh, especially across western parts and that low sitting to the west or northwest by this stage this is the middle of next week, most likely weather pattern. Then some interesting uh, differences by the time we get to later next week. The low is likely to start to fill in and push more towards the north. So it's more towards northern parts later next week where the greatest risk of showers will be towards the south. Still a chance of a few showers around, but a lower chance compared with earlier in the week. A better chance of some brighter and drier interludes coming along as higher pressure starts to build in from the southwest. Now this might take some time, but there are signs that that higher pressure centered over the Azores will begin to stretch towards the south of the UK into next weekend. Still the signs there with these colors here indicating rainfall that there will still be some showers and, and even some thunderstorms around, particularly towards the north, but I wouldn't say anywhere would be immune for next weekend. It doesn't look like a clear-cut dry situation anywhere, but it does look like a trend towards more settled conditions arriving from the southwest. And with still this westerly airflow, so we're not going to go back in the near future to the cooler easterly winds that we've seen so much of recently. And still low pressure towards the west of the UK. And this is the most likely setup for the week after next, although by this stage there is a very muted signal in the computer models, so I wouldn't take it too literally, but it does look more likely that we'll have that ridge of high pressure extending from the southwest to start to introduce drier and sunnier conditions for many, particularly towards the south, perhaps a bit more changeable towards the north with temperatures recovering as a result. But it doesn't look like there'll be a heat wave on the way anytime soon. So those are the most likely trends. But of course, there are uh, festivals coming up over the next few weeks. 
and a lot of people will be interested in what's happening with these individual festivals. It's very difficult with this kind of weather situation where it's quite showery to give specific forecasts for uh, individual locations. But this is the most likely trend. It's going to stay warm and humid through the next 10 to 14 days with temperatures generally above average across most of the UK, but not quite as hot as it has been recently. This weekend, for the likes of the Isle of Wight Festival, is likely to turn more showery. And for Isle of Wight, it looks like it will be a dry start Friday into the start of Saturday with plenty of sunshine before those showers start to pop up. Very hit and miss, but they could affect the Isle of Wight Festival later Saturday and more especially into Sunday. Even some thunderstorms potentially moving up from France, for example. Then next weekend, so for the likes of Glastonbury and for the likes of BST Hyde Park, there's that signal for things to turn a bit drier once again, but you wouldn't rule out showers continuing in a few places, particularly, say, for the start of Glastonbury. This is Glastonbury's uh, weather trends from the European model for the next couple of weeks, in fact. Rainfall's on the top, we've got wind here, and then at the bottom we've got temperatures. Now, this summarises the output from around 50-odd computer model simulations from the European model, and uh, the majority of the uh, results from these computer models are summarised in these boxes with the spikes there, the whiskers showing the extreme ends of the simulations. So what you can see is that the average line, the red, the boxes stay above that average line all the way through. So it's likely to be warmer than average by day and even more so by night actually, the overnight temperature is likely to stay well above average. So it's going to be fairly warm and humid. Daytime temperatures typically low to mid 20s, not as hot as it is at the moment in Glastonbury, cooling off a bit, but still warmer than average, but not entirely dry either. However, as I mentioned, it looks like the peak shower and thunderstorm risk is early next week. And then by the time Glastonbury gets underway, still the chance indicated by these boxes and certainly some extreme results coming out with some computer moral runs continuing to suggest some thunderstorms into the weekend. But actually it looks like the risk of showers for Glastonbury slightly reduces for the event itself, certainly as you get further into the weekend and the potential for that higher pressure coming up from the southwest. So still some uncertainty. Uh, as we go into next week and the following weekend. But the signs are there that we'll certainly see an increase in shower activity before perhaps lessening with time as well. Bye-bye.